So, hello everyone, and uh, I welcome you all to this particular session where we have with us a pretty exceptionally bright student, I would say. Bright, because I can say that Mansa is a student who stood out uh, right from the class days to wherever I've interacted with her. Uh, now, Mansa, just to give you a brief background, Mansa passed out of uh, Pest University, Bangalore in 2018. And this was her second attempt at the civil services examination. And she's come out with flying colors and secured 48th rank this year. And uh, Mansa has chosen quite apart from a lot of other people. Her first preference was to join the Indian Foreign Service. And she's all set to join the Indian Foreign Service. Uh, she took political science as an optional. And uh, she, apart from taking political science as an optional, She's been, uh, she's done some really good essay writing as well, something that I've personally come across. And uh, we were fairly, fairly convinced even before the results came out that she's going to do like, exceptionally well in the essay paper as well. And in the essay also, she's one of the highest scorers and scored 140 uh, out of 250 this year in the essay paper, which by far is amongst the top, what uh, I think top one or percentile of those even who got selected. So uh, easily, uh, Mansa's essay is something that I had the, I should say, uh, the pleasure of checking. And uh, while going through her essays itself, uh, one could make out that these are very well structured essays where the focus is both on content and presentation and a very to the point, the kind of things that UPSC wants in uh, the essays that candidates write. So uh, in this particular session, what we'll be doing is we'll be discussing with Mansa about her essay preparation strategy. And hopefully soon, either in Delhi or online on a Zoom, we'll have a separate session with Mansa on her political science optional strategy as well, uh, and even her general study strategy as well. So that's something that we'll be doing at a subsequent stage. In this particular session, we'll focus on essay. Uh, on the most important questions about essay, how to choose a topic, the sources, how to approach philosophical essays, and uh, issues around writing philosophical essays, and how should a candidate approach. So firstly, congratulations, Mansa, for your well-deserved success, I would say. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Okay. Now, uh, Mansa, uh, let's, uh, without any further ado, let's start. Uh, and. Uh, the first thing that I want uh, you to kind of lay out for our students who are watching this or going to watch this later uh, is uh, about, uh, you know, the importance of essay in terms of your UPSC preparation at the mains level. And, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of toppers talking about that it's all about strategy apart from hard work, right? So, and when they talk about strategy, especially you coming from an engineering background, and uh, uh, just for the benefit of the audience, Mansa is also a computer science graduate from an engineering background. So you're coming from an engineering background, uh, uh, a lot of uh, successful candidates talk about input output, right? What is the output that you can get for the input that you're putting in for the subject? So how does essay fit into this picture, you know, for the input output ratio and in the final scheme of things? So the essay is worth 250 marks. And uh, regarding how much effort we have to put in, one is, you know, collecting information of like get the knowledge component. And most of that is already done while we are preparing for GS. So there's very little of that to additionally do for the essay. And the second is focusing on some strategies or making some notes and actually practicing the essays. And this should only take a couple of like tens of hours, not hundreds like that we have to put in for other papers. So for this one paper, the return on the input is very high. And uh, given that I was going through the marks of even selected candidates, there's a huge variation. Even, uh, you know, people have scored 110 also, 15 also, 20 also, and people, the few people like you scored 140 or a bit above that as well, right? So even among selected candidates, there's a significant variation in the essay uh, writing and something, a 20 mark variation can shift your rank from here to there, right? So that way is, I think, yes, uh, I mean, the essay is something uh, which is less talked about 
but it kind of brings together knowledge from all other subjects don't have to spend too much time reading separately some amount of notes and strategy and essay writing beforehand will kind of help you more great now uh, the next thing that i wanted to talk to you is uh, you know when we talk about essay writing is uh, in the paper itself you know the first thing that students uh, uh, ask us is about how do you go about choosing an essay topic given that you have four options in paper 1 and four options in paper 2 right so how do you go about choosing an essay topic what is the criteria you keep in mind or you kept in mind while choosing an essay topic so when we look at the previous papers upsc usually asks two kinds of questions one is a very thematic one uh, that we have already prepared sort of for general studies like gender education health and so on so for these i believe that we should already prepare some notes so that when we go out there we already have certain points that we can use and so when you encounter something in the paper that you have already prepared for then you can attempt it the second is there are so called abstract questions or philosophical ones now these i believe like a lot of students have trouble attempting these but i believe these are the ones you should attempt because one your answers will be extremely different they will be personal to you and so they will reflect who you really are so i believe in the essay the point or the goal is to make sure that the examiner knows who you are that that you can you can convey that in the interview but in the main stage itself essay is the one paper where you can show the examiner what you are and who you are so the philosophical questions uh so you have to see obviously there is um something that you should know about them so if you have four questions you will uh, be able to uh, make out that there is there might be one or two questions where you way which you find more comfortable and second is maybe it relates to your optional for instance my option was political science and international relations and i think that helped me quite a bit so you have to understand that there is no strict syllabus for the essay paper you can use knowledge that you have gained throughout your lifetime from your school books your general reading even movies and pop culture so all these i think you can use them in the abstract or ethics related or philosophical essays more than you can in the strictly thematic questions yes and so so to sum up while choosing a uh, a question you have to look at what you're familiar with and actually most importantly what you want to do at that moment because i feel that if you really want to do something your passion or your interest will really reflect in your answer great so one thing that you're saying is that uh, as we also used to say was that that essay is a reflection of your personality at a certain level and that is what you get to showcase given that you have 10 12 pages to write not and you don't have to sum it up everything like a gs answer in one or two pages so that's one thing the other thing that you saying is that okay interest is one thing in that topic and domain knowledge you know you should have some in depth knowledge so political science kind of helped you in terms of whether they were philosophical topics or you know uh, the theme based topics as well yes or and uh, and mind you i i think that this kind of uh, advantage is something that may come to you even in sociology in philosophy many other optionals as well i mean it's not limited to one thing but yes domain knowledge is something which will definitely help you uh, and is has to be a major criteria in deciding yes. the topic and there's no running away from a uh, philosophy related topic as well You... I don't think you should run away because most people won't attempt these kinds of questions, and uh, this is why you'll get an edge. You should attempt them. Yeah, and uh, and we'll come to the philosophical topics again, Mansa, in a bit because I want you to talk more about philosophical topics. I remember reading some of your essays where the philosophical topics you kind of wrote pretty well, and even in uh, you know topics like health, education, gender, there can be that element of philosophy. which can be brought in right so we'll talk about that now the next thing is uh, students always ask us that uh, you know in terms of two questions one is about what sources 
should they use you know why while they've started preparing for an essay what should sources should they use while preparing an essay and should they make separate notes or a separate copy or some separate strategy while uh, you know condensing their information to prepare for essay okay so again while preparing for the essay we need two things one is the information so it can be certain dimensions that you need to unpack some data points that you can use some quotes these you can pick up anywhere there is no single source and for certain like most um, repeated topics like health education and so on you would have covered them in gs and uh, you can even google these things uh, to find out some interesting quotes and so on the other is how to actually write the essay so i strongly feel that if you are a good reader well you might not be a good writer but you will at least be able to make out whether what you have written is good or not so i strongly feel that you should read a lot and that will be ample preparation for your essay so certain books um, if anyone's interested they can read uh, the discovery of india by nehru i think glimpses also and there are a lot of um, books by vivekananda ambedkar and so on uh, these people have a knack for writing um, they have this stream of consciousness style of writing so perhaps that can uh, perhaps you can take some uh, things from that and so again there is no strict um, source list for these uh, kinds of things but i think throughout your um, free time you should just be interested in reading new things and that will be enough preparation okay so while while you were reading and you would have done a breadth of reading from certain sources did you actually go about making uh, notes like you do for general studies uh, did you go about making notes for your essay paper as well no no okay. um so again if if you have just started reading and your exams a couple of months so we maybe you want to uh, take notes although i i'm not sure of how much that will help you i think this thing uh, this essay preparation should be long term you should um, if someone is just starting out in the upsc preparation journey they should start reading books and that will help them and there's no need to take notes actually what you should pay attention to is the style of writing that is you have to effectively communicate what you're thinking in a way that the examiner feels that they can really understand you know they feel at one with you hmm. and don't focus too much on the vocabulary that is peripheral i feel you should focus on again conveying what you think the clarity of thought is important so so what you're saying is that okay it's not that very important that from day one you start making notes for essay writing and all that's not required uh what is also not required is that you have to be a shakespeare in terms of uh vocabulary or in terms of understanding that this is essay writing this is not uh, this is essay writing and this is not something which is a test of your vocabulary or your fluency basic uh basic uh, knowledge of how to go about writing formulating sentences is important but you don't have to you know be all ballistic on vocabulary or you know sentence uh, formulations too fancy stuff is not required what is required is are you able to convey your idea or not exactly great so that's one thing the other thing that i kind of wanted you to uh, throw your light on is uh, when should a student actually start writing essays when should they actually like pick up a previous year essay topic and try to write an essay on and uh, what should you know suppose you're writing an essay for the first time so from your first essay to writing the second or the third essay what are the things you should keep in mind before you go to write the second essay or the third essay or what is it that you should look for once you've written an essay to kind of improve the further ones okay so i started writing essays around 2 months before prelims because we got the extension because of the pandemic i feel that if you are confident in your abilities first to uh, to see if you you are a good writer maybe write one or two essays when you start out your upsc journey and if you feel that it's fairly good then you can leave essay preparation to after prelims i think that is fine 
but um, if you are not uh, so confident about writing formulating sentences and so on then maybe it is something that you can practice from the beginning itself although i really feel that there is the there's the right time to do everything if you do something initially you are not going to be the same person a couple of months into the upsc preparation so your approach to essay will change also so don't go ahead and um, there's the right time to do everything sure so again how you write your essay changes so initially i feel that it will be good if you if you already have a layout for your essay uh for instance when i was part of the essay program so we would give us the layout for important topics and we would just have to formulate sentences so initially you could do that because now you don't have to focus on information you would have to focus a little bit on structuring and more on formulating and conveying your thoughts and after that you can venture into topics that you haven't encountered before and you could focus on brainstorming so uh, you don't have the information but you need to brainstorm in 20 minutes and then come out again with a layout and write your essay in 40 to 50 minutes okay so one of the things what you're saying is that uh, because you had a fair degree of confidence in your writing uh, for you uh, you chose to kind of start it off you know at a later stage around immediately after the prelims right that's one thing uh but at the same point of time uh, the whole thing that many people like okay should we start preparing for essay from day one that may not be the right time or the right idea if and there may not be one uh, you know one time when everybody should start writing an essay it kind of is a individual experience you know you should be honest in your own assessment am i good at writing have i done some form of creative writing essay writing ever in my life am i good at expressing what i uh, understand with a piece of paper if the answer is no then probably you should not wait till after the prelims you can start even a bit before prelims but that doesn't mean that you start from day one once you have your basic understanding of polity history geography economy or your optional in place whether that's political science or sociology or uh geography or anything else that is when you can also start beginning right you need to do your self assessment first right before you kind of start writing the essay yes okay. so uh that's great the next thing uh you know how many uh because i know you know you may think that this question doesn't make sense but students keep asking us this question that how many essays should one write uh you know before going into the exam or how many did you write before going into the exam okay i wrote 7 to 8 i think uh, and the eighth one was actually timed and word limit was followed and the seven essays beforehand most of them the layout was already given by you uh, in the program so i was just formulating my sentences hmm. um so this is entirely personal it hmm. depends on uh, whether you are comfortable writing for a long periods of time or not uh, mm. i felt that so initially we were writing 1400 to 1500 words um, essays and uh, within the same one and a half hour and i felt that the ac- actual essay in the upsc exam requires only around 1000 to 1100 words and so it was very easy so if you practice writing for a long time then it's relatively easier to condense all that and write it in a short while later so again there is no strict um, number for how many essays you should write if you have the time then you can practice essays on the major topics uh, definitely some uh, topics at random that uh, are philosophical in nature you can practice to see how you would perform with a uh, question that you haven't encountered before but again this is entirely up to you so what you're saying is that you know you know you wrote like 7 to 8 essays and uh, initially you're following the structure uh, and focusing more on making arguments and then eventually you move towards writing uh, you know timed essays of in one and a half hours and uh, one thing is also which is i think you stress and is kind of important is that your essay writing will not remain the same you've been saying this right 
it won't remain the same from your first essay to your seventh or eighth essay it will change and you'll also develop that stamina to write because gs answers is like one or two pages and then essay is like 10 11 pages so you'll develop that stamina also to write only gradually right Okay. Yes, yes. And I think it's important to write in those A4 sheets which have the margins cut off because then you can plan two to three paras per page and you can uh, plan it like introduction in one page, then body in 10 pages and conclusion in one page. So you won't feel that it requires a lot of effort. You know, the pages will fly back quickly. True, true. So I think the rule of thumb, you know, have one, one and a half page for your introduction another one page for your conclusion and some 10 pages or so for your body of your essay. Yes. Right. Great. Okay. Now coming, we've been talking about philosophical topics and I wanted you to shed more light on the philosophical topics itself that many people consider it to be a nightmare and all. Now, uh, in terms of philosophical topics, you know, when, when you were approaching writing a philosophical topic, so there's a topic like healthcare for all or education for all related or gender justice related topic. That's one set of theme based topics. The other is about inclusivity and equality or greed and profit or, you know, uh, inclusive growth or uh, equity or whatever. So on the, when you were approaching these philosophical topics, which by their nature did not mention health, education, gender, or many such things in their name, how did you go about interpreting such topics? Because interpretation is the key to these topics, right? So what was your approach for these topics? So I don't know if they have only a single interpretation. Perhaps they can be interpreted in multiple ways. So I think, honestly, intuition plays a big role here. And you also need common sense. And uh, once once you read the question, read it a couple of times and you have to brainstorm and maybe while brainstorming, you will come up with different dimensions that you hadn't uh, realized could be covered in the answer. And uh, for these philosophical questions, so there aren't uh, specific sources of in information that you can uh, draw upon, but there are historical events and uh, some literature for example, I relied a lot on the Mahabharata. I read Guru Charan Das's The Difficulty of Being Good and Devdat Patnayak. So I think Mahabharata, Ramayana, or uh, any historical, uh, mythical work uh, can be a good reference to draw upon. And uh, second, a good knowledge of history, again, uh, to repeat uh, my point, you can think about world history or Indian history uh, any cultural event also. And uh, for instance, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, this year, the uh, there was a question on a ship. Uh, do you remember that question, sir? Yeah. The um, question was uh, ships uh, sink because of water which gets into them rather than water which surrounds them. I think that uh, was Yes, yes. So my interpretation of it was that, um, you know, um, it was a take on determinism. That is just because in water, it doesn't mean you sink. You, if you let in the water, you sink. So something like that. And in the conclusion, I quoted Invictus, the uh, poem uh, that Nelson Mandela liked. And the, just the last two lines saying, I'm the uh, master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. So these references from literature and history are things that will really help you in these essays. Great. So I think because what you're hinting at is that while you're looking at philosophical topics, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you need to spend some 15, 20 minutes, uh, firstly, interpreting the statement rightly, and then brainstorming on that idea, right? And when you're brainstorming on the idea, say, uh, that was like the ship idea, or on any idea, say, about, say, that's about greed or power, uh, many of these values that you're looking at, greed, power, equality, for them, a lot of reference you can find in uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the texts like the Mahabharata or the Ramayana. And as you were saying that, you know, something that I think we also referred to in class was the difficulty of being good, right? Guru Charandas, because it talks about the right set of values and that helps you in ethics also 
and other places as well so uh, you saying that okay relying on some of these important literary texts whether they are of the indian nature and also on historical examples that you're saying whether they come from world history or elsewhere because these are something so interpretation is one thing and then you know you uh, back it up with either examples coming from literature or from history and at the core of it is your interpretation because your interpretation is the argument to kind of substantiate the argument you're using examples either from literature or mythology etc right yes yes so when we uh, brainstorm we will realize that there are certain arguments that we want to make you categorize them you decide the flow in which you want to present them and for each argument come up with some historical instances or literary references so it's and it's important uh, that you know for each interpretation or idea when you come up with the historical examples or literary references you should have at least uh, read them and have attempted some topics beforehand before you go into the exam because uh, if you don't you know if if you read the mahabharata and you know that you are you're looking for these values then you'll know that okay that if there is uh, 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 karna then what values karna's life represents whether that's loyalty or whether that's uh, you know speaking truth to power or whatever is the case so there is a club there then what does a club when arjun represent right the dichotomy between these arjun and a club there. so it's important that while you read these books you should know what are you looking for otherwise it it may just appear as a story again something that you always knew okay yes and also um it's very easy to uh, exceed the word limit and write a lot about one one reference so you have to be careful about that wrap it up quickly make sure that every word you use has a lot of meaning and connotation because usually when we start writing an anecdote then we can go into couple of paras and you want to cover more arguments right? yeah so the emphasis is not on giving anecdotes and writing very lengthy anecdotes but use as brief anecdote to kind of specify an example uh, to specify an argument right okay so one thing about anecdotes because you brought this up and this is kind of important uh you know uh, while we talk about anecdotes uh, many students argue that oh sir should i write my personal anecdote or is it some historical tale or like the ramayana or the jataka stories or panch tantra or uh, you know some mythological story so because many students come to us and they say sir i wrote a personal anecdote so because i think where where you were saying this right, that anecdotes have become very lengthy personal anecdotes have a even bigger chance of becoming lengthy and uh, i'm not sure perhaps you can write personal anecdotes but i don't feel that uh, it's a good idea actually because the examiner might not feel that it's a great anecdote or something sure. but for uh, literature it's already agreed upon by several um, notable people that it is a great reference so, yeah so rather than using personal anecdotes uh, if you come can come up with a either a historical example or a literary anecdote that is a much better thing to do right okay now uh, okay now the next thing that i wanted to also talk to you about was that uh, while preparing for essay what are the things that you think uh, candidates must not do or what are the things which you felt uh, you know uh, what are the things which were not very useful or productive in terms of preparing for essay so um regarding the presentation i think you should just write in paras you can use subheadings but not more than that no diagrams or flow charts or maps nothing of that sort mm -hmm. and uh, regarding the information that you uh, give don't um make it for instance if you choose to put data don't flood the, your your answer sheet with data because you don't want the examiner to feel like you know uh, this is a gs answer or similarly so what i'm trying to say is don't focus on one dimension and go in depth into that you want to cover a lot of different tactics and a lot of different styles of information and you want to put them together okay 
So what you're saying is that so many students keep banging their head in terms of, you know, I want to give more examples and more data, more examples and more data. That's not something is your focus. Your focus is on touching as many dimensions and giving some suitable example, but no need to, uh, you know, worry too much of having too much data in your essay. This is not a research paper, right? Yes, yes. And make sure when you're when you give examples, like you said, it's not just for the sake of giving examples, because you have to make sure that it actually makes sense um, out there. Okay, so great. And uh, last thing I want you to throw your light on, you know, in terms of essay writing is that uh, how is, uh, you know, uh, because students keep asking us this, uh, that how is uh, essay writing different from uh, general studies answer or uh, you know how does how should one uh, approach uh, essay writing and how is it really different from GS answers that you anyways do from GS paper one to four so for general studies answers I think the information and the analysis they play a major role but for the essay there's another component the emotional aspect so you need to be, you need to have that personal touch in your answer. And by this, I don't mean personal examples, anecdotes. I mean that um, when you write, your style of writing reflects whether you care about it, whether you feel passionate about it. And I think the examiner needs to understand that this is something that you deeply care about. And uh, that's why it helps if you pick a topic you're interested in. Or even if, you know, you have to make do with whichever topic, you have to show some um, show something, um, you have to make sure the examiner understands that you really are interested in this. Okay. So what, so what you're saying is that the GS uh, question is a more, uh, one could say a dry analysis of arguments and facts. And here is your own personal touch. Your sense of conviction should come out in the essay, whether if you're writing on gender, if you're writing on health, if you're writing on education, or if you're writing on equality, if you're writing on inclusivity, if you're writing on compassion, it should come out that the thing should come out in your essay. Yes, the GS answers can also have a philosophical angle. For instance, in the conclusion, uh, I would quote a lot of things like Vasudeva Kutumbakam or something like that. Uh, but that is secondary and that adds some flavor to your main answer. In the essay, it's the other way around. Your facts, information, analysis, they add substance to that that complements your main answer but what you really want is to reflect that passion great and i for what i could vouch for the fact i do i did see a lot of <laughs> one could say a sense of involvement in terms of when i was going through your copy so i can completely correlate with what you're trying to say and uh, that's uh, something that i think uh, for the benefit of the audience that what mansa is emphasizing again and again is that while you while you're writing a topic, don't think that this is uh, this is you know a, another GS answer that you're writing. You should feel that this is you showing your personal sense of belief and understanding of this topic to an examiner. And uh, as we often say that you know your copy is the only uh, link between the examiner and you. So this is like. Uh, you know, before the interview stage, if there was one stage where we could test your personality, this is where, you know, in your writing, uh, your personality would be visible, right? And maybe there may be people who may be a bit shy and uh, a bit more introvert, maybe in an interview, but essay is where you can showcase your convictions very strongly. Great. So, uh, Mansa, uh, I think it's been a very uh, wonderful session with you. And uh, I am pretty sure students will benefit from this. Uh, more importantly, I'm looking forward to having you in Delhi when you have time, right? And, uh, uh, you know, interact more with the students here and even kind of give your inputs uh, to them so that they can actually talk to you and you can clarify their doubts, even for political science, for GS, for SA, throughout the whole range or wherever it's possible for you. And, uh, I would again want to congratulate you on your success. And I'm pretty sure wherever you go to represent India in whichever forum, you will uh, you'll be a shining beacon of light there.
Thank you so much, sir. And I also want to say one more thing that the main thing, the main quality required in this exam is, you know, you have to have fun, really. The essay paper is the first paper you're just, you know, getting into the group. And every other paper, I think you should, you know, don't worry too much, don't stress too much. It's a lot of fun. You know, most people focus on what comes after uh, getting selected. I had a great time preparing for UPSC. So I, I think because that's, uh, I think that's a very important take home message for anybody who's watching this is that uh, enjoying the process is the key, right? If you enjoy the process, whatever comes after this is going to be awesome. But even this process of enriching your worldview is going to be truly transformational and will help you wherever you go. Okay. Great. So I think uh, Mansa, that's been pretty useful for you. And I would again, thank you for taking out the time and I hope to see you soon. Thank you, sir.